In the largest and longest running civilization experiment in Minecraft, we're taking 10,000 players and scattering them across a 1 to 2,000 scale model of Earth. Over the course of this series, we will witness economic expansion, military conquest, and the rise and fall of empires all in Minecraft. The entire experiment will be documented in regular videos on my channel, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Let's get right into how this is going to work. Each player will receive a basic starter kit upon first joining the server. I've only implemented this because some areas of the map can be pretty desolate and I want people to try to settle these areas anyways. Players can use slash wild to spawn in a random location on earth and use the dynamic map at dym.roland.com to navigate. They can also use slash t new name to make a town and claim land. Eventually players will outgrow their small towns and need to make a nation using slash n new name. Multiple towns can be united under one nation and nations can go to war to take territory from other nations. To declare war on a nation use slash war nation. After a period of time, a player from one nation can place an oak fence on another nation's land. A flag will spawn on top of the fence, and if the attacker defends it long enough, they will take control of that chunk of land. If the defender breaks the flag, the attack fails. In order to trade with each other and buy resources from the server shop, players can exchange gold and diamonds for a digital currency. They can then make secure shops by punching a chest, holding an item, entering a price in chat, and restocking the chest with the item. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's see how our players handle the first two weeks of the experiment. For the first 48 hours, bases were still really primitive and most towns were primarily focused on obtaining food to survive, while a few towns began to manufacture tools and weapons using primitive villager workforces. Players rarely engaged in trade as there wasn't much to buy or sell, nor did they attempt to take territory from their neighbors. The world remained in a relatively peaceful, fairly unchanging state after the initial arrival of our players. There were a few interesting conflicts that broke out midway through the week. One user by the name of Ali, who was the creator of the largest nation at the time, sent me this footage of his attack against the second largest nation. Allegedly, rising tensions and a powerful enchanted apple led to this conflict. In the beginning of the attack, Ali and Zelp immediately surprised and slay two of the enemy's soldiers. After regrouping inside of their base, the defending nation emerges and tries unsuccessfully to slay Ali in a 2v1 attack. Later, we saw the emergence of a mysterious vigilante fighter who successfully besieged a nation despite being at a numbers disadvantage of 4-1. to one. On his first attempt in a humiliating defeat, they had trapped him underneath their base and slowly killed him. After this, he swore to destroy their town and did so successfully as they continued to call in reinforcements from their nearby allies. Having no use for their resources, he destroys them just to make a point. Things began to change when more towns began to use villagers and XP farms to produce stronger weapons, armor, and tools. Through this, players slowly gained the ability to wage war with one another. Nearing the end of the first week of the experiment, several small skirmishes had occurred between neighboring nations and a few of them resulted in the complete conquest and destruction of a town. By the end of the first week, a few global superpowers powers had emerged. The largest nation by far, Baradur, located in Central Australia, had demonstrated their capability to wage war over long distance by attacking the town of Italy after one of their members was assassinated while passing through the Mediterranean Sea. The Italians, not having the population or resources to fend off Baradur long term, quickly surrendered the status of having their own nation, favoring the neutral status of being a small town. Sometime during the second week of the experiment, the nation of Baradur fell quite quickly to Ali's nation of Rimhitten. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of footage that survived this conflict and the main base was sieged while a couple of their strongest players were banned from the server. The siege left Rimhenton with most of their wealth, sadly concluding the peak of the Baradurian Empire. Meanwhile, the town of Your Mom was unsuccessfully attacked by the towns of Roomba and Shadow. According to a player by the name of Havlin, members of their nation logged on to find their base under attack by several players. Apparently, these same players had previously assassinated a cow that was very important to Your Mom. Miraculously, Havilland was able to find reinforcements and fend off the attackers, eventually forcing them to retreat. We've nowhere near covered all of the events that have occurred over the past two weeks, but this video is just to start off the series and give you guys a taste of what the rest of the series will be like. From here on out, we'll be watching how civilization develops in videos covering the most interesting conflicts on the server. If you want to help in this process, you can record your experiences and in interesting conflicts and send me a link on Discord. This will help support the project and I may even get to use your footage in a video. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys next time.